is Ben Moss, uh, also known as Ployd. Uh, welcome to my uh, presentation about uh, my art. Simply put, art is my punk rock. Uh, I make art that um, really is made up of all of the things from my youth that I found influential, uh, like comic books, uh, punk rock, skateboard graphics, Dungeons and Dragons, and graffiti. Uh, I use these elements to create uh, high contrast, energetic art, uh, and uh, usually having a message of strong anti-capitalist uh, leanings. Um, I try to make my work really dynamic and bring the energy uh, and grit and texture of street art and graffiti into my fine art. I live and work in Shreveport, Louisiana. Um, I've lived in several other places, uh, but this is where I always wound up again uh, in my hometown. Um, art has always been uh, my path. I don't even know that I really chose it. Um, I just always have done it, and it was never a question that... Um, this is what I was going to do with my life, um, even if I didn't know what form that might take. Uh, the thing that really sparked my interest in making art was comics, uh, especially the work of Jack Kirby. Uh, he and his work uh, are still to this day my first and foremost influence. Um, I, everything goes back to that, uh, to every, the dynamic layout, the quirky, jazzy, strange designs, uh, just everything about it uh, just really energized me and still does. Here's a few examples of his work. Um, Jack Kirby actually created most of the Marvel Universe, uh, um, for those familiar with the movies. Um, he, along with Stan Lee, are responsible for the vast majority of the characters that we know uh, in their stories. Um, and Jack Kirby also created a good portion of the DC Comics universe as well. So there was just a, a huge well of stuff to draw from. He, he was amazingly prolific, um, and I've never seen his output matched. Um, I graduated uh, from Northwestern State University. I had a BA in art. I uh, graduated in 1997, uh, immediately became a graphic designer, and stayed in that career path for over 20 years. Uh, I realized as soon as I graduated that really no one has a fine art painter on their payroll, so I had to have a job that would actually uh, pay the bills and using some of the skills I had. Um, I was not a graphic design major. I was a fine art major, so I had to learn uh, Photoshop and uh, Illustrator and all of those sorts of things um, on the job. And those were the days when it was really just starting to be a major force in graphic design, at least in our region. Um, so I was really sort of on, in on the ground floor for a lot of that. Um, I did that until I became a father in uh, 2005 at the age of 33. Um, I wound up uh, being a stay-at-home dad for about almost five years. Uh, and that really made me be able to step back and reassess uh, my intention of staying in graphic design or not because I did not find it to be a satisfying vocation. Uh, it used a lot of the same creative energy and, you know, you had to flex the same creative muscles as you do when creating art for yourself, but uh, it did not serve a satisfying purpose to me. It was all in the service of selling products or services uh, and advertising things to people that uh, to get them to buy something, and that just did not appeal to me. And that sort of dovetails with how my political leanings uh, began really taking shape around that time. Um, I start, had started being more politically active and, and trying to really inform myself on issues um, around that time, and... Uh, I started painting more. Um, I, when I graduated in 97, I went through a phase of mainly just working the graphic design and not doing a lot of painting. So around 2003, I started a real painting practice again uh, with acrylics that I, I, had, I had never used acrylics up to that point. Uh, I had learned with oils. Uh, so I started uh, painting again and uh, exploring the idea of merging 
the comic book influences with my socio-political ideas that were forming at the time, and still are now. Uh, it's it's a, a lifelong, ongoing process. But um, the idea of art that was based on comics, which are a mass-produced throwaway commodity, um, you know, that being the vehicle to critique capitalism's failures, uh, oh, it appealed to me a lot. It seemed uh, pretty subversive, which I'm I'm kind of into. Uh, ever since then, uh, my I've been sort of uh, refining and experimenting with process and how to come up with ideas and different techniques, um, and including uh, you know uh, spray paint and graffiti, uh, which is really what I'm more known for these days. Uh, here's a few turning points. Uh, someone had asked a question uh, to me about how were there any points along the way that I, I knew I was on the right path or if I knew that this was what I wanted to do. Uh, I can point up three. They don't necessarily look like much as far as uh, great um, leveling up in, a, in technique or, or uh, achievement-wise, but to me they're important because they were turning points in direction. Um, the first one on the left is called Femme Fatale. Uh, I was really influenced by Picasso. Um, Picasso is one of my main uh, influences after Jack Kirby um, and was definitely more so in those days. Um, that's the very first acrylic painting I ever did, um, and it and a few others that I was doing at the same time uh, were accepted into a local gallery uh, group exhibition in Little Rock, Arkansas, where I was living, and that also it also marked my very first exhibited work beyond college, uh, so that was significant. Um, I moved back to Shreveport, Louisiana in, at the very end of 2009 and started getting involved with the local art scene and the arts council here and just doing as much as I can to get myself out there and to, to really just embed myself um, in the local art scene. Uh, my friend John Lomax, uh, in the right-hand side of the middle picture there, he taught me a lot. He taught me basically everything I know to get started doing graffiti and tagging and uh, any stuff like that, street art. Uh, he and I and a few other local artists were selected to be on a street team for a series of uh, art events uh, in Shreveport. And uh, we also served uh, in other capacities on uh, other residency teams and things like that. And we really got to know each other, and he was a big influence on me in my direction. And that's when I sort of abruptly made a hard turn towards street art. Um, the final one on the right, called Everyone Loves a Winner, was uh, sort of a return to detail work for me in my uh, in my fine art, uh, and obviously heavily influenced by street art this, at this point. Um, it was a return to big work, um, and I decided this here is a, a turning point for me because I decided to go all in with the street art and graffiti lowbrow style that I'm sort of known for. People ask me why I do art, what's my reason, um, and this statement to me says, says it all. Uh, art is a fist. It's also an extended hand. What that means to me is just pure communication from one person to another, from the artist to the person viewing it. It's direct communication, and to me that's the most important aspect of art and what I do, uh, even beyond technique or uh, even necessarily subject matter, just the fact that it's communicating an idea from one human being to another uh, is very powerful to me. Um, it's, uh, you know, just through the commonality of each individual's experience, it can even bring together two viewers of the art, not just the, the artist and the, the person looking at it. Um, I think that there's a lot of power in that. And, um, I think of uh, a sort of the analogy to me of uh, personal style is like voice. Uh, the media and techniques that you use are sort of uh, analogous to language and alphabet for me. Um, the messages that I usually and themes that I try to uh, put into my art usually uh, is one of rejection of the status quo of uh, American mainstream culture. Uh, and you can read that as capitalist, white, popular stuff. Uh, I sort of distill everything down, in my opinion, or in my philosophy, to um, who are you to say that things should be the way they are um, when there's so many other people out here who don't necessarily agree. 
Uh, it's mostly a rebellion against the unexamined acceptance that the way things are or the way they should be or the way they have to be. And I like to throw in humor, uh, irreverence uh, in that because I don't want to be didactic. I don't want to necessarily beat anyone over the head with messaging. Uh, I want it to be there, but I also want uh, the delivery of it to uh, be in a form that's palatable. As far as technique goes, um, I've always been a very mixed media artist. Um, I have a habit of using whatever materials are on hand that'll do the job for me. Um, uh, in that spirit, I often use several techniques and media in the same piece, sometimes even doing things intentionally wrong in order to experiment with material interactions. What do I mean by that? Like, for instance, using oil-based media and water-based media in the same piece, layered in such a way where they'll interact with one another and you may get crackling or bubbling uh, or uh, resist, uh, things of that nature. Um, and the reason I do that is simply because uh, graffiti and street art have made me fascinated with surface and layering and uh, erosion. And um, I like that you can see a physical record of layers that came before. You can still see hints of things that are below the current layer you're looking at. Um, I just find that fascinating. Um, contrast is important to me uh, in color and value and also texture. Um, I really like uh, differing textures uh, being right next to one another. Uh, it just uh, It's just another level of contrast to me that uh, I've come to really like in my work. The biggest challenge right now for me is because I do street art and graffiti, I do fine art, I do illustration, I do murals, um, I really am struggling a bit with integrating all of those techniques from each of the media that I use into one another. I, I want it to be sort of uh, uniform across the board uh, so that you can know that Ben Moss did this no matter what you're looking at. Here's a few pieces uh, that I've done in recent years. I'll pause for a second so you can read the names. And you can see here, uh, the middle two are digital, right? You can tell through the lines and the marks that I use that it's my work, but it's a lot slicker digitally, right? Um, the texture really comes in the physical pieces, and that's one of the bridges I want to cross. I want to sort of bring that textural element more into the digital work. Here's a few more. And you can see the, the uh, sort of rebellious themes going on here. You can make of it what you will. This is, uh, these are the beginning of a brand new series that I've been working on most recently called People from the Universe Next Door. Um, a lot of them are using techniques that I have developed in the past couple of years and sort of bringing it all into one cohesive body of work. Um, I'm using a lot of image transfer techniques, uh, using gesso and uh, 1950s era magazines. There's something about the ink in those magazines that reacts to gesso and allows the images to be transferred onto your surface. Um, I use a lot of advertisements in it, uh, sort of as a nod to um, the pervasive uh, nature of uh, advertising in a capitalist society. Uh, everything is focused around buying things and consuming. Here's uh, a few more from that same body of work. One of the, I guess, uh, hallmarks of my style and subject matter um, is cartoonish characters, uh, a lot of them in existential crisis, <laughs> um, sort of as a proxy for uh, real human beings in our experience. Other things I do are uh, public art and murals. Um, this is the most recent thing, public art piece that uh, my uh, mural partner, Cadavian Baylor, and I did. Uh, in Shreveport. Uh, it was a in the Stoner Hill neighborhood. Uh, we 
reactivated and revitalized a neighborhood uh, basketball court. Um, and uh, it was in partnership with the city of Shreveport. And you can see here that the imagery is more uh, intended for uplift and uh, good feeling uh, rather than critique of society or anything like that. And, and I do differ in that respect when it comes to public art um, because the, you have to think about the audience that it's intended for, right? Um, it's not just a manner of me expressing myself, but it also serves a purpose for this community. And I don't think, uh, you know, farting hot dogs or big middle fingers would serve that purpose very well in, in this capacity. Uh, now, this one is a little bit different because it's a it was a private commission uh, for a church for their basketball court. But what they asked for was a um, an environment that looked like an active urban graffiti area um, in which several graffiti artists and taggers were using it. And it's like it was a living, breathing graffiti um, wall. So uh, to um, fulfill that part of the brief, I did a lot of character work and made up, gosh, uh, at least 20... 20, 30 different tag names and uh, put them all over the place. Uh, so it wasn't, Ployd is in there, but Ployd's not the only name in there, but they're all me, <laughs> if that makes any sense. Now, most clients do not ask for something like this when it comes to mural work. It's usually they want something very cohesive in one single idea spread across their walls. So this was interesting and fun. Uh, this uh, is a, a Black Lives Matter mural mural. Uh, made during the uh, protest, mar protest marches in Shreveport um, last year. Um, and it fulfills another piece of, of what I do that I, that I think is important is I think um, social change um, is really important. Uh, I think it's important as an artist, as one way to give back to your community, is to support causes that you believe in. And um, if you can't, donate tons of money, which I can't, uh, I can at least use my uh, talent and skills to uh, support and uh, help out the things that matter to me, and this, in this case, social justice. This was uh, an art installation at Art Space uh, in Shreveport uh, in which uh, my uh, friend Jeremy Jernell and I uh, were partnered to completely cover the interior walls of the space uh, for an exhibition. Um, and we basically had carte blanche. Uh, it was called On the Margins, uh, and the reason for that is because most of the ideas came from, or at least for me, came from uh, scribbles on the margins of notebooks and sketchbooks that I had created over a couple of decades. Uh, some of the art for this was inspired by stuff I scribbled in a class notebook uh, in the 1990s. Uh, it's uh, a lot of it had a, its genesis back then, uh, so it's kind of cool to see it come to life uh, on an actual wall. These are mostly just one-off pieces um, of uh, graffiti and street art that I've done in the recent uh, couple of years. Uh, the two on the right are actual real murals. Um, the upper right is uh, at the Agora Borealis in Shreveport. It's actually, it's larger than that. That's just a portion. Uh, the one on the bottom right is a vinyl mural uh, that was commissioned by the Shreveport Regional Arts Council. Um, and the imagery is based on, is uh, my artwork uh, blown up uh, immensely. And another thing I do a lot uh, and have, uh, it's new to my practice, for, I've done it for the past couple of years, is um, since I do a lot of graffiti and street art and mural work using spray paint, um, I can't bring myself to just throw those things away uh, and, you know, contribute to pollution. Um, so uh, I upcycle them after they're empty and they become pieces of uh, art themselves. And uh, people seem to really respond to it. Um, they actually probably sell better than anything else I do. Um, I do, and you'll see here, uh, a lot of the characters on them are uh, existing characters that you probably are familiar with. There's Woody Woodpecker, there's Felix the Cat, um, or Fritz the Cat, excuse me, um, and uh, uh, Mario and Skeletor. Um, 
And I usually don't like to do characters that belong to other uh, companies or people. But in these cases, um, uh, it I use them sort of as symbols of capitalism and uh, consumerism. And so I corrupt them in some way or change them. Uh, like in the middle, you see Mario. Uh, he's actually holding a Molotov cocktail with the anarchy symbol on his, his uh, hat. So he's anarchio now. Uh, and a lot of the uh, characters are altered in some way or another to bring out some humor and to also critique a little bit. Uh, one of the most important things uh, in uh, my talk uh, that I want to uh, impress upon anybody watching is if you're an artist, never throw anything away. Uh, never throw sketches away. Um, you need to keep your records of your ideas um, because you'll never know when you need something or you'll need to remember this great idea you had a few years ago if only you had kept the sketchbook or the notebook it was in. I know it's kind of it's kind of a pain to hold on to every little scrap of, of paper that you, you do some scribbles on or whatever, but it really can help you. Uh, I've done at least two giant murals that had a huge origin, a huge amount of their origin in my sketchbooks. Uh, and uh, just scribbles in the margins of, of school notebooks, uh, stuff from years and years ago. Uh, and it's come in handy. It really has worked. Uh, some of my best work has come that way, uh, through just rediscovering uh, the genius of just one-off doodles that I thought wouldn't amount to anything. Uh, I kind of really like going through old notebooks and sketchbooks uh, and sort of rediscovering stuff that I'd forgotten about uh, and you know, patting my former self on the back for, for <laughs> leaving this treasure for me for later. Um, it's also a really low-pressure way to practice and to get better uh, with your skills, your hand skills. Um, uh, there's no judgment there. Nobody's gonna necessarily going to critique it. You can just have it for yourself. Um, and I just find it very liberating. Um, and I find that I probably do a lot of my best work in my sketchbook uh, because it is so liberating and you really have no limits. Um, and it's that cur it's given me courage in my uh, final artwork a lot of times to try things that maybe I wouldn't have thought of. Uh, this is a, a very abbreviated um, CV. Um, uh, if you would like to see the full one, you can go to the Northwest Louisiana Artist Directory. It's NW. It's a journey to decide your favorite artistic media, which is um, actually graffiti. What was that? How was your journey to decide your favorite artistic media, which is um, graffiti? Um, honestly, just experimentation. Um, uh, I think um, before I got started doing that, um, what I did, uh, I noticed how how often I was noticing the graffiti trains going by as I was in traffic one day, and uh, it hit me how I had never stopped to notice it before, uh, and you know just how cool it is, and and what great uh, a great means of expression that is, and uh, just the whole the physicality of it. You know, you have to use your whole body to do it, your whole range of motion. It's it's a uh, it's really cool. It's it's a it's a fun experience. Uh, and at that point, I decided that I wanted to, to figure out how to do that. And I noticed a lot of graffiti artists seem to have a lot of the same kind of influences that I did. Um, and it, so it seemed a natural extension, honestly. And uh, I was getting bigger in all of the paintings I was doing. So it seemed like the next step up from that size canvas was go to a wall. Uh, then luckily, uh, a few opportunities came along uh, from the art council here, uh, and the rest is history, really. Uh, it's actually spray paint and markers are now my main medium, even on canvas. Mm, can I have a do two more questions? Sure. Okay. Uh, which one is your favorite project? Oh, gosh. That's hard to say, honestly. Um, Different ones for different reasons. Uh, the uh, the most recent one, the basketball court, uh, where the court itself, the floor was was painted, um, was really satisfying because it it's there's a measurable good to the community by doing that. You know, um, 
like you can see it. You can see people enjoying it and, and playing on the court and people gathering. Um, that to me, that that kind of impact is is uh, it's really nice to see. Uh, it makes you feel like you've done something that means something. Um, as far as my other ones, uh, gosh, you know, uh, both the the basketball court walls and the church that I did and the art space uh, uh, installation that we did, both of those were really satisfying because we got to do basically anything we wanted and that never happens. Um, unless you're just out doing graffiti by yourself, you know, and you pick a wall and you do it. But most of the time people don't ask you to do that stuff, you know, uh, both of those are great too. Yeah, actually my favorite one and the most interesting like um, was as well the basketball court. Mm, um, the last one is, uh, from whom did you get inspiration to start your career as an artist? Um, I think it's never been a question to me. Um, I think during, I think it was kindergarten age when I, I thought maybe I'd be an astronaut <laughs> or something for a little bit, but that didn't last <laughs> long. Um, it's just always been such a natural part of who I am. It never really was a question to me if I was going to be an artist or not now. Whether or not I can make a living at it, that's still up in the air. <laughs> but, but, um, but as far as you know, whether or not money was going to come from it, I knew it was what I was going to do. Uh, and it just, and seeing other really great artists I admired uh, doing it and, and succeeding, like, like Jack Kirby, like I said, he was the first. He's the first one. Um, I'm a big Picasso fan. Um, I've grown to really admire. Um, uh, Kipto uh, and um, Detour uh, 1000, uh, as far as you know, spray paint guys go, um, and muralists. Uh, gosh, who else? Um, Michael Reeder is amazing. Um, I'm a little jealous. I'm a little mad of how, of how good he is, <laughs> actually, to be honest <laughs> with you. Um, uh, Great. And plus, he's so much younger than me. It really is irritating. <laughs> so, um, Gregory Hergert, uh, I am enormously in love with his work. Um, and I didn't come to even know about him until the past couple of years. Uh, and now I'm just the hugest fanboy. It's ridiculous. Um, I like uh, Galen Cheney. Uh, she does a lot of interesting stuff. Uh, it's she analyzes graffiti and how it's, you know, the graffiti writers do their thing, uh, but then she breaks it apart and it becomes completely abstract at that point, but you can still see the marks of street art in it, even though it's, it's fine art abstract. So it's, that's a really cool, um, really cool combination there. Um, I tell you what, I really like the work of Drake Davis and Vita Shell a whole lot. Um, a lot of local people, um, a lot of regional people, I've become a really big fan of because um, a lot of people don't realize just what a huge, deep bench we have of, of really extremely talented people in our region. Um, it's, it's kind of mind boggling, honestly. I've been to other cities and, and they had a few good artists, but it wasn't nearly like our region is here, like Shreveport, Monroe, uh, Ruston, uh, all across that whole I-20 band. There's just so many good artists. And uh, I, I wish I could I could name all of them. There's just too many. It's ridiculous. Jennifer Healy. Okay, check her out. Thank you. Thank you for the questions. I oh, have a question. I, yeah, go I'm on. My wife, Linda, my favorites, too. <laughs> um okay so what is the longest time you've ever taken to work on a piece uh like a painting or a mural um either or what's the longest like out of everything okay uh the longest of everything uh I think I took about a month uh on a mural uh, a month roughly maybe a, give or take a, a day or a few days yeah um the basketball court both basketball courts, in fact, took about a month. That's amazing. Um, 
I, I wish we could get faster at it, honestly. <laughs> it seems kind of fast and red, but I'd still, uh, I'd like to be able to do them even faster than that. Okay. Okay, Um. last question. Um. Have you ever had a muse for your work? Like for a piece, did you ever have a muse? Not really. Uh, I mean, I have, I guess, well, sort of. I mean, I've, I've taken inspiration from uh, a person as a subject, but, and then like made it not them, but the spark came from that person. Um, but I wouldn't, not in the traditional sense of like, you know, uh, this person is my muse and I, uh, I get inspired over and over, you know, from multiple works of art. Um, not really. Um, I think part of that is because uh, I'm pretty sure I'm undiagnosed ADHD. <laughs> so um, my mind moves all over the place a lot of the time. Um, and uh, that's one of my biggest challenges in my career and as an artist is being able to stop, organize myself and stop long enough to focus on the task. Um, so, um, this latest thing I've been doing with this series I've been doing is actually some of the most concentrated work I've done. And I've, I've really been having to battle my own tendencies to actually stay on task with that and, and keep it all within one particular uh, thing. Uh, but uh, yeah, yeah, not so much. I mean, um, I've, I've done portraits or portraits inspired by particular people. So I guess in that sense, you could say, yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Can I ask a quick question? Do you think uh, do you think the image of the hot dog somewhat uh, uh, emotional is a self portrayal the way he expresses emotions? Absolutely, I do. Yeah, hundred percent. That guy is me. <laughs> <laughs> He's different. Pretty cool character. <laughs> Very unexpected, uh, you know, twist on a hot dog. Well, thank you. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Hey. Howdy. How you doing? All right, man. Good to see you, virtually at the very least. So I was wondering if you could say something about the need for professionalism um, for visual artists. Because we know there's oh. this stereotype that artists don't do business, that they're afraid of it, and there's an apprehension. And we know there, you know, there's some truth to that, and there are reasons why. But why is it incumbent upon artists to be in charge of their their business as is associated with the work they make and the people they interact with? That's a great, great. I wish uh, someone had been able to answer that for me when I was in college, honestly, um, because that was not ever uh, anything that was taught to my my class cohort. Um, uh, is you know, they would teach you technique, but as far as being a working artist, it was never on the agenda. Um, and uh, I think it's incredibly important for to have that professionalism and organization and business acumen um, as a working artist. Uh, I mean, unless you're making enough money to hire somebody to do it for you, um, then honestly, uh, because you do have to represent yourself as a business. Um, you are an individual, yes, but when you go into negotiations for buying and selling things or, or contracts for commissions, um, you really have to conduct yourself in a professional manner. And I think almost it's almost incumbent upon you to do it more so because of that stereotype. Um, and um, I feel like I always have to sort of uh, pre-game in a way have to have to uh, um, prove it you know because there is that even true or not you know to some extent the the sort of flaky uh, oh I don't want to do this this thing uh, that it, it exists but it's not every artist and somehow we've gotten the reputation that it is every artist <laughs> in, in a lot of cases um, so I think it's a pleasant surprise uh, and can help you in your business negotiations as an artist to come prepared and to to be on top of it, meet your deadlines, and have your money game on point. Exactly, and it also creates a space where you're ready to to make things happen, where other artists may be trepidatious and they're not prepared to to have those conversations about what they need to get paid and how they need to get paid and what they're able to do 
with regard to the you know the specifications of what the client is asking for. You know, those exactly. are things that we, we need to be able to do. Yeah, and it's not that it's luck. The thing about it is where opportunity meets preparedness. Mm. Uh, if you are ready for, you know, if you're ready for that to, when it comes along, then you've got it in the back, you know, honestly, to me. Like, that's how, um, like, uh, my mural partner, Cadavian Baylor, um, that guy, he, I've learned from him, and he's, you know, almost half my age <laughs> you know and he's i'm still learning from him about that he's he, he is on top of it i think he's maybe even and i don't want to say it make this sound bad bad here because he's an, an, an amazing artist but i almost think feel like he's a better businessman even than an artist well it it, it requires some skill to be able to do it it's not something that, that people can do just in general so you know or you have yeah. to train yourself to be able to do it for sure absolutely and, and that right mm. um it, it can be taught it can be learned um it just requires um you know realizing that you do have that power in your hands and that's a tool for you to use exactly thank you thank you thank Great you question. thank you very much uh ladies and gentlemen uh do you have any more questions please go ahead it's your time yeah Anyone? Have you looked into tattoo art? I um, actually was this close to doing an apprenticeship for that uh, in, gosh, what year was it? 1998, even. Uh, I had one lined up and then I had to move. <laughs> so it never happened. <laughs> um, I'm kind of glad that I didn't. Uh, I'll, I admire tattoo art a lot. I've got, I think I've got 20 or 21 myself, but, um, but uh, I have a really um, big aversion to inflicting pain. <laughs> it's really squeamish until I'm hurting someone. So, uh, so yeah, it probably was for the best. Um, and what is your inspiration behind the uh, God are pleased with your offering? Oh, oh, that is, um, okay. That, I'm a bit, I like, I love Frida Kahlo's work for one thing. Um, it's sort of a statement on, it's so many things wrapped up together. It's, it's hard to explain. It's kind of like explaining a joke. It doesn't work when you have to explain it. <laughs> um, it's, it's a commentary on celebrity, especially in the modern context where so many people are internet famous, right? Um, but at the same time, we have the hot dog, right? Who's a symbol of the utter disillusionment with our particular system uh, in this country or in the Western world. Um, but in, in this artist is holding it up for view, right? And it's sort of a statement on artists showing us truth. Okay. And uh, the, uh, the tattoo on her arm is Black Flag, which is a punk rock band. And they sort of did the same thing to me. <laughs> Anyone, ladies and gentlemen, your last chance, please. We have a few more minutes to uh, ask some questions if you have any. I have another one. I have another one. Um, um, which, uh, which are the characters that, uh, why you like Frida Kahlo? What's that? Say again. Well, uh, which ones are the characteristics of Frida Kahlo's work? I still, I'm sorry, I still can't hear you. Uh, I'm, it's cutting out on me, I'm sorry. Um, you want to are the characters? Oh, okay. Uh, you well, can you hear me? I can now. Um, which are the characteristics um, of Frida Kahlo that you like the most? Oh, what what characteristics of her work? Yeah. What you're saying? Um, oh, gosh, man. I just love how it all seems to exist. This is going to sound really, I don't know, out there or, or woo, but I just love how it's dramatic and seems to exist sort of floating in its own world. I love the sense of atmosphere that she was able to create more than anything else.
Thank Does you. That make sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm from Mexico, so she's also uh, one of my favorite artists, and she was um, as well one of my inspiration figures to to Very start cool. painting. Yeah, I, I just um, there's some artists may just have so much character to their work that um, not only can you instantly recognize it as, as theirs, but it instantly pulls me in. Uh, and that her work is that way to me. Um, there's a feeling of loneliness, but also expansiveness to it. If, does that make sense? Uh, I, it's, I, it's, it's hard for me to articulate because it's an emotional thing for me looking at her work. I want to be able to create that. <laughs> so, that okay. If thank you. If, thank you, Rachel. Thank you. If nobody's asking, I'm going to ask one more question that I think um, I'm trying to explain to my students that it's very important to be brave, to take that first step. Have you ever been scared and have you had to like just go for it and be brave? Uh, this, I, I, was, I was terrified coming into doing this today. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But, um, but in, in a more specific uh, uh, answer to that is um, in 2018, I saw, I just randomly, I don't remember even how I got the news of it, but there was a um, mural and street art um, festival contest uh, for Fort Worth, Texas. Uh, and it was called for artists and it was co a competition and only a few got picked to actually come make a mural. And I hadn't done one at that point. Uh, I had not done a real full by myself mural. Uh, and I got picked. Uh, and wow. <laughs> so I ordered a bunch of supplies and went not knowing what in the hell I was going to do. <laughs> and, and it worked out. And, but I had to, because I knew well, this is what you want to do. You've got the opportunity for it. It's scary, but go do it. And uh, it, it worked out really nicely. Um, and uh, it doing things like that, even sometimes when you fail, um, I think can still it'll teach you something, and it can help you prepare better for next time. Exactly. It's and also far better to have tried and failed than not to have tried. It. You can fail at things you hate. <laughs> you know, so at least you, know, you try to try to do something that you love very good well thank you so much for taking your time today thank you so thank much you. for sharing your unique beautiful quirky crazy <laughs> art world the uh, i think i gain so much more appreciation for graffiti art myself today so <laughs> thank, you. thank you so much have a great day, everybody. Uh -huh. Thank you, sir, for taking your time out of your day. Thank you. Thank you. Guys.